Hello Sigmas. Before we look into this interestingly difficult problem, let us draw our uh, favorite Cartesian coordinate system. Right, so in this problem it is given that the very famous basketball player, Mike Jordan, is located at the origin of the coordinate system and in his entire life he has been playing basketball right but today he has been given a very difficult task he has been playing basketball but the hoop of the basketball was always stationary but today the hoop is no more stationary it is located on a cart so there is a cart and this is the basketball hoop. Right. And the hoop is located on the cart. Right. And uh, now this so at t equal to zero, Michael is given the task that at as soon as the stopwatch starts, that is at t equal to zero, he has to throw the basketball from the origin. And the cart is going to start with an acceleration of 1.5 meters per second square. And the task which Mike is given is that he has the basketball should cross the hoop. Initial, this basketball is located at a height of 1.25 meters. And initially, at time t equal to zero, it is at a distance of three meters from Mike. And this is me, the physicist who has given Mike the task. And to my surprise, Mike was able to throw the basketball into the hoop. And I was left wondering how he did that. But as a physics student, I wanted to calculate how he did that. So I decided to calculate the initial velocity with which Mike had thrown the ball. And to when while the basketball had crossed the hoop, let's say it has moved uh, this much distance, right? So it has moved the distance. Okay. And what I observed is that while the basketball had crossed the hoop, it made an angle of 45 degrees with the hoop. The hoop is located in a car. So with this information uh, available, I now want to calculate the initial velocity with which Mike had thrown the ball. And the time at which the ball crossed the hoop. Let's say it crossed the hoop at uh, some time t, then I want to find that t in which it crossed the hoop. So that I really understand how Mike is a better physicist than I am and how he was able to throw the ball within the hoop. Now before I tell you the solution to this problem, I want you to pause this video right here and try it out yourself so that you actually learn how to think. The, the motive behind asking you to solve this problem is only to make you think first, which is very important. It does not matter whether you were able to solve the problem or you were not able to solve the problem. What is important is you trying it out yourself first because that will create a wiring in your brain which will help you to solve physics questions in further in your future. and. Uh, if you are not able to solve, then while you will look at my solution, you will understand that this is the mistake which I was uh, making or uh, this is where what I was leaving out. And in fact, if you have watched my previous video properly on projectile motion and kinematics, then solving this problem is no big uh, task because you can just solve it on the basis of what I have taught you so far. So if you even if you were not able to solve it, no problem. I'm here. I'm going to tell you the solution. So no worries. Right here and go try it out yourself. You done?
Okay, now let me discuss the problem with you. Now you might have been able to solve the problem, but still I would want you to watch the solutions because your method, the method which you use into solving the problem might be different from the method which I'm going to discuss right now. And maybe my method is better than yours or your method is better than mine. To find that out, watch out the solutions. Now, let I'm saying that Michael had thrown the ball uh, with an initial velocity of u, which made an angle of theta with the x-axis. This is the typical assumption we make in projectile motion. Right then, the horizontal velocity, the velocity in the x-direction, and let's say this is the y-direction, the velocity in the x-direction we know it will be u cos theta, and the velocity in the y-direction is going to be, you will be surprised, u sin theta. So now again, as we have done in our previous uh, videos, we are going to break down this problem into the x and y directions. So in the x direction, since its velocity is u cos theta, and let's say it has covered some distance, right? It has uh, covered some distance. So what is that uh, distance going to be? It is obviously going to be u cos theta, its velocity in the x direction, into if I'm saying it takes a time t. So for uh, the cart has moved some distance u cos theta t in that time t, right? So u cos theta t would be equal to, uh, in the same time, this is the distance which the basketball has moved, which is equal to what the cart has moved. Because if this, if the basketball has to cross the hoop at some time t, then they must be located at the same point, right? The coordinate of the basketball and the coordinate of the hoop is the same at this point. So u cos theta t, the distance in the x direction which the basketball has crossed is obviously equal to the coordinate of this cut, right? So if it has started with at three meters, right? As I've told you in the question, it has started with uh, at a distance of three meters and it does not have any initial velocities. It has only an acceleration, constant acceleration. So it started at three meters plus uh, I'm going to use uh, s is equal to ut plus half at squared. Actually, x is equal to x naught plus ut plus half at squared, as I've explained uh, in the previous video. Since it didn't start at the origin, it started at three meters, right? So it will give three plus half into its acceleration, as I told you, 1.5 meters per second squared. So 1.5 into at time t, it has covered this much distance, right? t squared. So here I have used s is equal to ut plus half at squared or x is equal to x naught which is the initial distance plus ut plus half at squared but since u was zero of the cart we get this equation. So uh, we get u cos theta would be equal to 3 by t plus uh, 1.5 divided by 2 t. Right, I just divided this t over here in this direction, right. And next we are going to analyze the motion of this basketball and the hoop in the y direction. So again, as I told you at this point, the x and y coordinates of both have to be the same, only then they will cross the hoop, which makes sense. Uh, if we had the coordinate system, Right, then the coordinate of this point, uh, y coordinate, and the x coordinate of this point will be the same for the basketball and the hoop, right? So now we are going to satisfy the second condition that the y coordinate is also the same. So if it had a velocity u sine theta, but remember in the y direction there is also an acceleration. What is that? Nothing but gravity. So, we are going to get u sine theta t minus half g t square. This is for the basketball in the y direction, right? So, it has the acceleration. So, now it will become u sine theta t minus half g t square. Here, there was no acceleration. That's why we only got u cos theta. Would be equal to the y coordinate of the hoop. Now, since it is moving only in the horizontal direction, as I told you, this 
hoop is moving only in the horizontal direction its vertical distance that means this height is obviously going to remain 1.25 meters throughout its motion right so we know that the y coordinate of this point is 1.25 meters so this is going to be equal to 1.25 meters so i am going to get u sin theta uh, t is will be equal to 1.25 plus half g t square and uh, u sin theta would be equal to 1.25 divided by t plus half g t let me call this equation 1 and uh, let me call this equation equation 2 now as i i had told you that i observed that while it crossed the hoop it uh, made an angle of 45 degrees with the x axis that means if i break the breakdown let's say this had a velocity v right while it crossed the hoop the basketball had a velocity v then i can break it down into its two component in the x and y direction let me call its component in the x direction as vx and its component in the y direction as vy then you can easily see from pythagoras theorem that uh, 10 45 degrees actually 10 of minus 45 because this angle is taken in the minus direction like it is in the clockwise direction if it is in the anti-clockwise direction then the angle is positive but since this angle is in the uh, clockwise direction it would be a negative angle so we are going to get 10 of minus 45 degrees is going to be equal to vy upon vx now what exactly is vy vy is nothing but u sine theta minus gt right at time t if it is cross crossing the hoop then what is its velocity at that point u sine theta minus gt obviously and divided by u cos theta because in the x direction its velocity is always u cos theta right as it is there is no acceleration so it is time independent so what do we get we get uh, u sine theta minus gt divided by u cos theta is uh, equal to minus one and that is going to give us u sine theta minus gt is equal to minus u cos theta now we have already found u cos theta and u sine theta right look at my equation one and equation two so i'm just going to substitute u cos theta and u sine theta from my equation one and two in my equation three let's call it so substituting u sine theta what was u sine theta 1.25 divided by t uh, plus half gt square now g i'll put g equal to 10 right so plus uh, half g would be 5t right here we have half g so that will become 5t because g is 10 uh, minus 10t is equal to minus uh, u cos theta what was u cos theta u cos theta was 3 by t so i will get minus 3 by t plus 1 by 5 divided by 2 what is 1 by 5 divided by 2 it's a 0 0.75 so i will get minus 0 0.75 t right yes okay so i'm going to get 1.25 plus 3 divided by t if i take this on the other side and i take the t terms on one side i get 10 minus uh, 5 uh, minus 0 0.75 t All right so that is going to give me uh what is this 4.25 divided by t it would be equal to 4.25 t so if what would be what would i get t square is equal to 1 which would imply t since time cannot be negative obviously t would be equal to 1 second 
So I have already solved a half of the question, which was to find the time in which. So that is the secret of Mike, right? He threw the basketball really fast, such that it reached the hoop within one second, right? Because he was an experienced player, obviously, and in fact, experienced enough to throw the ball within a moving hoop. Next, uh, we have to find the velocity with which Mike had thrown the ball. So you can easily see uh, that if I substitute t equal to 1 in my equation 1 and equation 2, I will get u cos theta. u cos theta would be equal to 3 by t, right? So 3. And what was it? It is uh, 3 by t plus uh, 0 0.75 into t, so 0 0.75. So 3 plus 0 0.75, which would be equal to 3.75. And uh, if I substitute in the same manner t in my second equation, u, or into u sine theta, I will get 1.25. 1 1.25 1 plus uh, 5 uh, into plus 5, yeah, 5 into 1, which is 5, so that is, that will give me um, 6.25. Now, if I divide these two equations, let me call this, what, 4 equation, if I call this equation 5, then uh, dividing equation 5 by equation 4, what will I get? I will get u sine theta divided by u cos theta would be equal to 6.25 divided by 3.75, right? U and U is going to get cancelled, so I will get 10 theta is uh, equal to 6.25 divided by 3.75, and what is that? That is nothing but 5 by 3. Right, so what would be the angle? I have also found this was not a part of the question, but I have also managed to find the angle at which the ball was thrown. Right, and another thing which I can do is now squaring and adding equation 5 and equation 4, I will get u square sine square theta plus u square cos square theta would be equal to what? What was uh, the square of uh, 6? 0.25. So what's the square of 6.25, huh? It's approximately 39.1. And what is the square of, uh, what was the next number? 3.75. What's the square of 3.75? That is nothing but approximately 14.1. So uh, we get the u square will come common and we'll get sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 39.1 plus 14.1, right? So 39 plus 14 would give, uh, it's approximately 53.2. And what is sine square theta plus cos square theta? It's the one, right? We all know that. So u squared is approximately 53.2. And u would be the square root of 53.2, which is 7.29 meters per second. So that completes our problem, right? We have found the initial velocity. And in addition, we have also found the angle of projection. We have found the time. And this shows that 7.29 meters is a pretty high velocity, right? So. Mike had thrown the ball with a very high velocity and high accuracy at the perfect angle such that it crossed the hoop at the right time, right? What was the time we found? One second, right? So Mike was a pretty experienced player and I hope this is the answer which you had found uh, while you were trying to solve the problem. So this was a very interesting problem of uh, Michael Jordan, the very famous basketball player trying to throw the ball within a uh, moving hoop. I hope you enjoyed the video and if to motivate me to create more such fun videos and uh, explain such fun problems, do hit the subscribe button and do not forget to like the video.
I will see you in the next very difficult problem of kinematics. Thank you for watching.